Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to a game from a Fosh 30 hour live stream. Another game from a Fosh 30 hour live stream. Except this one's from back in October of last year. So this is his previous? It must be, no in fact it must be like the previous but one. I think we're going back like three 30 hour live streams at this point. Anyway so this is a, a slightly older one. This is 916. And as you can see, I'm in a platoon with both Circle and Fosh. Now this is going to be a bit of a derpy game, and it's possibly why I didn't use this one up till this point. Um, it's got some... Th the ending of it is actually quite good, and it's a quite close match overall with some good overall teamwork. But as to my own performance, um, there are definitely some questionable shots taken. So one of the things that is going to make this a good game for me is, um, well, I'm in a Death Star, so, you know, that can do a lot of damage, but also of my two platoon mates, who are very, very good, well, Fosh has just died. And I'm going to give you a minor spoiler just now and say that Sircon ends up not surviving this one either, although he does manage to get more out of it than Fosh did, because Fosh has died pretty early on indeed. So... Because they're both such good players, that's going to give me a bit more scope to do damage than I would have normally. And when I'm playing with those two in particular, it tends to be the games where they get, get knocked out where I then go on to have a really good result. Not always, sometimes I manage to get as good a result as they do, or nearly as good, and uh, everybody survives. But when you're competing against players as good as Vosh and Sircon for uh, damage to the enemy team, then uh, yeah, you can imagine how that goes. So this is a very awkward fight on this corner. Uh, there's a fair number of our tanks here, but there's also a fair number of the enemy machines. They have control of the middle. They also have a Conk GC, which can point at this corner, and our own artillery might struggle a little more. I mean, it's a T92, and bear in mind this is the old school CGC and uh, T92, um, but we're all bunched up here, and uh, the, uh, the T92 doesn't have the benefit of the spotting that uh, the enemy team does from the middle. So this is just awkward. So we've lost two tanks already, which is not so good. Um, as you can see, Circon's actually pushed down to the middle, but he's in the process now of being rushed by two enemy mediums, so this is him about to be knocked out of the game as well. Now that Object 140, he's the guy I've hit once already, and there we go, another HE shell finishes him off. Now this is regular HE in the first slot. I tend to, with my tanks, um, I put the premium ammo in the last slot. And sometimes that's the second slot, and sometimes it's the third. But in this case, obviously, it's the third because you've got the, the three ammo types to choose from. Now some people just go full Hesh with their Death Stars, and they can understand that. The Hesh is like the foolproof ammo always going to do something unless you miss um, but personally I feel like that takes away some of the decision-making process for the uh, the 183 because sometimes just the the ability to do damage whatever is useful with the HE sometimes you've got a more armored target and they're low enough health that you know the AP is going to do the job in which case it would be a waste to use a Hesh shell and then there are times when the Hesh is what you want now that shot against the Skoda was a bit questionable, but um, sometimes you have to make these shots and hope that they actually work out. And in this case, it would have been nice if it had, because they are putting some severe pressure on our cap right now. That IS-4, however, backed up by the Type 61, is holding on pretty well. So for the moment, things aren't looking too dire. Now I've spotted this uh, Centurion Action 10 in the middle, but unfortunately, well, Again, a slightly questionable shot. I mean, I was fully aimed, it wasn't a snapshot, but I only had a very small amount of his turret to actually shoot at. So, waiting until I had a bigger target would have been better, and I would have had the opportunity, because he's gone back into the middle of the abbey there. And um, there's every chance it still would have missed, but there would have been a better chance to hit just because there was more tank to shoot at. So as it is, um, that Centurion's going to get down without me getting a shot, but the Tiger makes a move and I fluff it again. So that's another shell wasted, and you can't afford to do that on the 183. I'm looking back at this 
this uh, seven month old game and thinking I really should be uh, placing my shells a little more carefully because uh, you don't get a lot of ammo in this thing. It is entirely possible to run out of ammo in the course of a game even though the reload is so slow. So the IS-4 is still hanging on at base, there's a very low health 5120 there as well. Uh, the mediums, a lot of them that, that were in the middle, they all went back to the 8-9 line because we had a T95 that pressed up on his own. And so those gaggle of mediums were uh, basically doing their best impression of the seagulls from Finding Nemo. And going, mine, 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 mine. <laughs> yeah, you know the ones. So um, that T95, I mean, it's not really been useful for the team. But, on the other hand, maybe the time that he's brought us with his distraction and drawing off those medium tanks, maybe that might prove to be useful. Now that's a complete speculative shot. Um, I have no idea if that is going to have hit anything or not. There's a good chance it probably won't have unless the 57 Heavy's lurking in those bushes, but he isn't. So. Uh, no, there's very little chance that actually did, and once again, you have to be careful with your ammo. Taking blind shots at bushes with the 183 is a very risky proposition in terms of it actually being a good use of your ammo. And it's not like I can afford to really waste it, because I'm down to now just six rounds. I've already expended half my ammunition. So the remaining enemy tanks, I mean, this is... They were really seriously pushing on us at one point, but, um, I mean, that T95 did actually maybe buy us some valuable time. So this is basically all of the, the remaining enemy tanks grouped up around here, apart from maybe the TVP. We've still got that one IS-4 at base, the Type 61's pressing up the 8-9 line, and it's just a matter of not throwing this away. <laughs> now I do have some hit points, I do have a bit of turret armour, so I, I could afford to take a hit or two, and if I can choose my targets judiciously, there we go, I can be quite effective. Now, I've unfortunately not quite managed to kill the Yag Tiger, but with the fire, um, that got him to be a very low health kill for our 125. Unfortunately, a bunch of medium tanks has just turned up behind us, and I'm still reloading. So, time to tuck myself in against this lump of hill and uh, try and angle. Unfortunately, this 50B has other ideas. Now, I've taken one hit, he pops out to, to put a third shot in, and that's when that Hess shell that I queued up comes in. Very useful indeed, so that just completely obliterates the 50B. That's one less autoloader to worry about. There are, however, these two mediums still alive, so... Oh, that was a pen through the axle, but... No, the armour holds, so... Yeah, even though this is suboptimal, um, there was enough angle there and I was able to hide my front plate enough to actually bounce enough of those shots to survive. So that was a little bit tense, a little bit of a close run thing, but the fact that I was in a 183 came in very useful there, especially being able to finish off that enemy 50B from such comparatively high health. This thing loves 50Bs. You can get a Hess shell, or even an AP in the turret, uh, it's just like it goes through like butter. So it's just these last two medium tanks. Uh, the STB I know is on low health. I've got Hesh re uh, loaded, but I'm not going to reload because it would be a really long reload. So Hesh on a 93 health tank is a complete waste, but reloading would have been absolutely the wrong thing to do. So, uh,. What's left is just this TVP, and I don't quite know what was going on in the chat. I mean, the I think maybe the Type 61 has mucked up a bit with the... I don't know. I mean, it was a two versus one, and the Type 61 is kind of hiding from this guy. We've also got the IS-4, who's only just now starting to make his way up the 1-2 line. Uh, maybe, maybe he'd been so intent on guarding the cap for so long, and, you know, he did have to at one point that he was still in that mindset for longer than he needed to be. Maybe I'm just being charitable, I don't know. But as it is, I mean, we should be able to take out this last TVP. Now, I was thinking of taking the low ground coming up round behind, but uh, instead the TVP is, uh, well, he's doing this. He's teasing our Type 61 and baiting him to, to come out and uh, 
uh, get shot. And I honestly don't know why the Type 61 didn't just, like, try. I mean, the TVP is an auto loader, so there's that. But the Type could have taken one hit and survived, and I don't know how good the, the TVP's uh, shot to shot time is, but surely it's not good enough that he wouldn't, like, the Type wouldn't get a chance to shoot at least. Anyway, so, there we go. I don't, in the end, get that final hit. The type does take the hit and gets the, the final kill in return, so if he'd just done that to begin with, it would have been over a little sooner. But as it was, there we go, that was an ace tank, and I think this is probably why I saved this, is that despite the derpiness, it was an ace tanker. And the fact that I got a steel wall on top of that, well, that's quite nice. It is entirely possible to get a steel wall in this. You've got enough turret armour especially, but... In the situation I was in, facing off against those auto loaders, it was definitely a, a close run thing. So as you can see, the uh, T1E5 uh, did very well. They had almost as much damage as I did, and I can tell you they had to probably fire a lot more shells to get that same amount of damage. The Type 61 was actually in third, so despite the hesitancy um, at the end there, and maybe at other points during the battle, I don't know, they still managed to rack up a, a fairly respectable amount of damage and kills. Um, but yeah, it was just, I don't know, it was a very close run game that, and it, it looked at various points like we might lose it, and especially losing Fosh and Sircon so early on, who were almost certainly the best players on the team, statistically speaking. Um, to, to be able to still walk away with a victory um, was, uh, was quite satisfying in the end. So there you go, a bit of, uh, a, of a Death Star game for you, and it's actually been a while since I've had one of those, so there's another reason why I picked out this replay. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed it, and if you have, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.